And now on the line is Paula Leonard. Paula is the national lead of Community Action on Alcohol or the ICANN Network with the Alcohol Forum. Paula, welcome back to New FM. Welcome back. Thank you, Darren, for having us. Okay, uh, Paul, I last spoke to you on the station two months ago. We are recording this interview today on Thursday the 8th of December, and I know you had a fairly busy day today. Uh, can you tell our listeners, uh, Paula, about the two events you have organised today and, and tell us why you launched them? Yeah, today, look, we've had a really busy day um, because we had, first of all, in the morning, a press briefing um, in relation to two parts of our work. So one related to the IMARC, which is the mark of independence, that community groups, organisations, charities, voluntary sector organisations and groups can sign up to, to brand themselves and to pledge that they will build organisations that are free from the corrosive impacts of the alcohol industry. So the bottom line is it means they are identifying themselves as organisations that won't collaborate with the alcohol industry, that won't accept funding from the alcohol industry, um, and that won't use educational materials or health information produced by the alcohol industry because they acknowledge that those may be limited, may include false information, um, or that may be obscuring sort of the real science and evidence that exists. Um, and the last thing that people who sign up to the work, they agree to become part of a movement that's going to raise awareness that the agenda of the alcohol industry isn't benign, it's damaging health, um, it's damaging well-being, and it has actually become a risk factor in terms of the numbers of deaths that you will see in a population from alcohol. So that was part one, I suppose, of our purpose for being um, there this morning and having an event. And the second purpose was to ratchet up our campaign, um, which is clearly saying to government, we want to see an end um to the provision of alcohol industry funded programs for children in Irish schools. Um, and we were demanding from government today, we were saying, look, in the last nine weeks, you've moved quite a bit. You now have a policy consensus. You now have had the Taoiseach, the Minister for Education, the Minister for Health, have all come out clearly and said that these alcohol industry funded programs shouldn't be in our schools. And yet they are. Um, so we've had 15,000 um, students in Ireland at least attend these programmes. And we're now saying to government, well, if you think that they shouldn't be in Irish schools, the question is, why are they? Why don't you issue a circular? Why don't you give clear direction to schools that the day um, for these programmes is gone and that we don't want them? There isn't any added value to them and that the alcohol industry funded charities and programmes and initiatives aren't welcome in the Irish education system. So we had the press conference this morning. We got quite a bit of coverage across, you know, national media. Um, and now I suppose it's up to government to act to protect children. Yeah, I understand that the Department of Education have already issued a circular saying that drink aware and alcohol industry in general uh, programmes are not uh, allowed in primary schools. And um, I, I find... It, the audacity of uh, Drink Aware to, to actually, because I believe they're expanding their programs. Like in the last couple of months, we had the Taoiseach come out and say that um, uh, the, the Drink Aware, it's not appropriate for them to be doing programs in schools. And the Department of Education and maybe Health have said the same thing, and the ministers have said the same thing, I believe. Like, I, I find it striking that they're actually, um, since then, since two months ago, they're actually. They, they, not only ha, ha, have they not given up what they're doing, but they're expanding it. That's the case, isn't it? That is absolutely the case. And they are relentless and determined and dogged in pursuing that expansion of their programmes. Since the sort of first parliamentary questions were asked in early October in relation to this, Drink Aware have written to every secondary school principal in the country um, to reassure them in relation to the misinformation that has been um, in media and in political discussions about them. I mean, we haven't peddled any misinformation. We have simply stated a fact that uh, Drink Aware is funded by the alcohol industry and that we think that that's inappropriate and represents a conflict of interest. Those are just facts. They're not my opinion. Um, so they've also um, been very clear 
that they are now um, introducing a new program for transition year students, that they have developed a teacher training program for transition year students, um, and that they have new teacher training programs available for those delivering their alcohol education program to junior cycles. So what we're seeing is the sort of relentless promotion of a program that all of the statutory agencies who are involved in the health, the well-being and the education of our children are saying shouldn't be there. So my real question is, they're not going to back down. So they're not going to stop until they're stopped. So the question remains to government is, what are you going to do about it and when? And it isn't just the Irish kind of state organisations and the government and Taoiseach who are, who are, who are criticising them. Uh, I believe the EU and maybe UN have also issued guidelines as well, haven't they? Well, the World Health Organisation <coughs> has just, you know, published its new European policy framework on alcohol. And within that policy framework, they have very clearly stated Alcohol industry and alcohol industry funded programs and activities have no place in two areas. One, the provision of health information and two, the provision of schools based education. So you're absolutely right to point to the fact that this isn't just Irish government policy position. This is the stated position of the World Health Organization. Um, and, you know, you, you've got to wonder um, with the weight of public opinion, the weight of, you know, media coverage that they've had, the policy consensus across government departments and global health policy all saying this isn't a good idea. Um, but they will continue to provide the programme, which is in itself quite remarkable. I, I heard you on a podcast on a, or the RT players say talking on more in Ireland. I saw the report on RT um, uh, news television at one o'clock. Uh, the report on this. Is, what would you say to the argument, Paul, that uh, Drink Aware has said that currently there is no kind of program in second level schools in general, apart from Drink Aware, and that there's a kind of need for them then on that kind of basis. Well, first of all, it's not factually correct um, because there is a Know the Score programme that was developed um, and, you know, there is plans for a robust evaluation framework for that. So that is a senior cycle programme that's available to secondary schools and that is backed up by resources materials and backed up by teacher training programme and that's delivered by the HSE and endorsed by the Departments of Health and the Department of Education. So that exists there are some existing health resources for junior cycle in relation to health that do cover alcohol. Um, but we are looking at the introduction next year, I do believe, of a new programme at the junior cycle level. So, you know, work is in train. Um, but we did sit down today at length with global alcohol policy expert, um, Professor Tom Baber, who is a senior policy advisor to the World Health Organization. And his argument on that question very clearly is that it is the responsibility of anybody to do no harm, you know, if you're going to engage with children. So that's first basic principle number one. And you cannot guarantee that there's no harm associated with these programmes. So therefore, no programme is better than a drinks industry funded programme. Oh, OK, Paula, uh, we are not long away from, we are at the Christmas holidays already and near, we're nearly at a new year. Before we finish up today, can you uh, tell me a bit more about your plans in the Alcohol Forum and the ICANN uh, network leading us into the new year? Well, I think the big battle for us, um, for everybody, not just the ICANN network and not just Alcohol Forum Ireland, um, we are part of, you know, emerging voices that are looking at building, you know, building real and meaningful work across communities and empowering communities to to have a voice around alcohol policy and what's happening. But I suppose one of our big ticket items next year is going to be um, influencing the uh, new proposals around sale of alcohol bill, because that is encapsulating what will be a very significant change in the way that alcohol is sold in this country, in how many outlets are allowed to sell alcohol in this country and in the hours of sale. So I have just spent today listening to 
30 years of scientific evidence that if you make alcohol more available, if you increase the number of hours that you sell alcohol, if you create conditions where you're going to have more people at intoxicated levels until early in the morning, which is what has been proposed in that bill, that you are going to have to pick up the tab in relation to increases in public disorder, increases in violence at night time across our towns and cities and increases in presentations to emergency departments and increases, unfortunately, the hidden increases that we're going to see in terms of violence in homes, neglect of children in homes that are associated with that sort of liberalisation of um, the alcohol licensing regime. So along with the IMARC and along with the campaign for schools-based education to be free of alcohol industry influence, that to us is the big ticket item in terms of what we want to see um, communities engaging with, communities advocating on and communities leading the way in the conversation about what kind of Ireland we want to see and what type of nighttime economy we want to see. Yeah, I didn't think I asked you that question. Um, I know the Alcohol Action Ireland have been doing a lot of advocacy on that as well. Um, just, uh, I'll talk to you about that again on the RFM, but just before you go, um, as regards drink aware in skills, I, I write in, in, I'm right in saying that what's needed is the, Department, the Minister of Education, Norma Foley, to issue a circular saying they're not welcome in schools. Absolutely. Look, this is pretty simple stuff. We know that they agree with us. We know that in principle and in policy that they agree with us. And what we simply want them to do is to issue a strongly worded letter telling schools that the days of the drinks industry funding charities to come into Irish schools to teach young children in Ireland how to drink sensibly are over. We wouldn't tolerate it from the tobacco industry. We would not have the tobacco industry in schools teaching children how to smoke responsibly or what they need to know about smoking um, in the future in case they make that decision. We're simply asking for equity in terms of what we wouldn't do for tobacco, so what we wouldn't do now for alcohol. That's as simple as that.